Hey everybody, welcome back to Dino Comics Forever, and I actually wanted to apologize to all y'all because uh, of the hiatus I'd been on. It's been somewhat of a crazy week because I had a freelance gig in Rotterdam a couple uh, last week. That was really fun, and of course there was Amsterdam Comic Con, which was amazing. Uh, this uh, video, I'm going to show you how I drew Domino from scratch. Okay, I wanted to apologize for the quality of the first part of the video. It's kind of crappy because I'm using this new webcam and I'm, you know, I'm still learning so I think I'm gonna keep using my phone. I'm gonna find a way so that it doesn't overheat and then explode on me. It's not a Samsung or whatever the hell those, the phones that were that exploded. I'm not that tech savvy. But anyway, uh, thanks for uh, forgiving me if you have and if you haven't, so I'll keep apologizing until you do. So anyway, here we go. So. What I haven't actually explained is, when it comes to uh, my drawings, is I always uh, start with very light sketches, and then, let's say I build up a skeleton, and then I actually, from there on, I uh, put on the muscle mass. Then I can, you know, decide exactly what sort of uh, build the character should have. And since I'm doing Domino from uh, Deadpool 2, which was played by the very talented Zazie Beats, she has a very slim build, so I didn't want to, you know, overload her with muscle so that it, she, that it's, you know, a completely different character. This one was actually challenging for me because uh, the face, well, drawing female face is always a bit of a, a pain in the ass for me, but I think you'll forgive me for that. And actually, something interesting about this uh, drawing, uh, it's actually the first time I actually, huh, I just noticed something really really weird when I was uh, drawing her right now uh, is that I made her head a bit bigger than uh, the rest of the, her body. But don't worry, I'll uh, correct that in Photoshop. I'll just make the head a bit smaller or I'll make the body a bit bigger. Whichever, because I mean, in the end, these lines, the pencil lines, are just to show me what needs to be inked, what needs to be in heavy shadow, and it'll all be good from there on. And for those who haven't seen Deadpool 2, I do recommend it. It's a really good movie, and hopefully they don't ruin it with another sequel. Or if they do want to make a sequel, they just call it X-Force. Because, uh, I think that would be a smart move instead of just making an, a full-on trilogy of the Deadpool character. And, of course, uh, some cross-hatching here and there. Because, personally, I love doing cross-hatching. It's one of my favorite things to do. But sometimes I feel like I'm overdoing it. But I think I found a healthy uh, balance between two. Okay, now we're getting into the uh, inking process. And what I did with a face was I actually just uh, I copied the jawline because I know I know for a fact I have a problem with symmetry. So I just uh, whenever I do I have something that needs to be symmetrical, I just copy it and paste it, and I flip it horizontally, and boom, problem fixed. Uh, okay, and now we're moving on to uh, just inking the rest of the character. And, I mean, I've been, we've all seen this process uh, been done to death, so now I'm just going to rant about uh, some of the things I did at uh, Amsterdam Comic Con, which uh, was, for me, one of the uh, more pleasurable uh, times I've had at one of these conventions. I want to thank the organizers of it. I can't remember their names for the life of me, but you know what? I'll remember it for the next video, or next time I'm at their uh, one of their events. And I have to say, it was a really, I had a lot of fun. I mean, I got to meet some uh, really cool artists there from uh, the first time I went there. And believe it or not, they remembered me, which was amazing for me. Another cool thing was I actually had uh, Dracon Chapter 1 in full color there. I mean, I sold, I had about uh, 10 copies there to sell. Okay, 11. One was a show model, which I also sold. And out of those 11, I sold out, which was amazing. It was, it's such an amazing feeling when uh, you work on something so long and s you're so passionate about it and you want it to succeed, and then it does. It's just amazing. Because sometimes you have to keep in mind, there. Are, sometimes your heart, your passion project, it will not succeed. But if you, if you have faith in it and you just work on it, it doesn't matter if it succeeds or not. As long as you put in the time and the effort into it, it's worth it in the end. And, I mean, it was just an overall great place to be, lots of fun. But sometimes I get the feeling that a lot of cons are just focusing too much on the celebrity aspect. They just really need to focus on, you know, what makes it Comic-Con, the comics. Ah, here is where I actually try to do something a bit different. And I'm noticing the camera is a bit, uh, ooh. This is, ah, here we go. 
All right. So basically, I wanted to try a different brush when it came to the shading, and I decided to just pack on the shadow all in one go and then uh, use the eraser tool to kind of uh, mold out what it should be. I'm trying to copy this uh, technique this uh, one of my uh, Instagram uh, fan friends has. I think I failed at it, but you know what? In the end, I'm going to try something else, or I'm going to retry it, but then on a different piece. Because I think when it comes to... Uh, my drawings, I focus too much on the heavy black lines as the outline, so I need to one day just make a drawing without the black lines and just start from there. Because as you see, I kind of faded out the black lines just to try something new. But you know what? I, I don't think it worked out. As I just wanted you guys to see, maybe you got some tips for me for next time. And you know, sometimes it's nice to fade out the black lines because then you can just try something different. And it gives like that nice Disney effect where the lines are actually colored. But uh, yeah, I think I failed at it, but in the end I went back to my own style because uh, I wanted to get the drawing done. And if, actually, I wanted to ask you guys uh, something. If you've ever been to a Comic-Con and sold some books, what was the, what Comic-Con was it and what was it, what court, sort of book were you selling? And also, most importantly, did you have fun? What would you do differently? And what people said about your stuff. Because I have to say, one of the coolest things about uh, these Comic Cons is I get to meet the greatest people ever, also fellow artists, and they all have the same grievances about the industry as we all do. Mostly because that people want the art, but they don't want to fucking pay for it. Which is the most annoying thing in the world, because in the end, because in the end a lot of people just think, oh, you're just uh, drawing for a living. Anybody can do that. No, fuck you. If that was true, then we, then everybody would be masters at Photoshop and wouldn't need to hire graphic artists or uh, illustrators to do their shit. Sorry. I'm just really passionate about that sort of thing because uh, a lot of times when in this industry when you apply for a position, you don't get it because of the most trivial reasons. But you know what? Let's not focus on that. I have to say, I'm somewhat ashamed to admit this, but I did not know about Domino's character until Deadpool 2, so I actually had to look her up, and it's uh, pretty interesting, the fact that her mutant power is luck. But, I mean, in the Marvel Universe, uh, a lot of these mutant powers are very ambiguous when it comes to their, uh, well, being linked to the being linked to the whole, like, a mutant aspect. Because uh, if you look at uh, mutants like Storm, her powers aren't exactly, uh... Well, I like to divide into uh, biological, well, magical, and uh, artificial powers. Because, I mean, uh, Thor has magical powers because he's uh, from Asgard, and he's basically the god of thunder. Uh, who else? Uh, Spider-Man has biological powers because he got bitten by that radioactive spider and has, like, spider powers, which are linked to his own uh, physical and biological uh, abilities. Storm, on the other hand, she it, it's canon that she's a mutant, but I highly doubt that her biology allows her to control the weather. I mean, I don't know how that goes. I mean, what about what is it about her biology that actually uh, can influence weather patterns? And I get that the same with uh, Domino. I mean, her luck, her power is that she can, that she's like really lucky, or that she can somehow influence chains of events that ha that help her. They give her an advantage in any given situation. I mean, how is that a mutant power unless she can, you know, really think in microseconds and then calculate exactly what percentages of probabilities are going to happen and what she would have to do in order to uh, put those in her own favor. I mean, if that was somehow explained in it, maybe, but... Uh, you know what, sometimes you shouldn't think too hard or else you just you just ruin the magic of uh, the character. I mean, that's what happened that's, uh, what happened to my friend uh, Harvey, who just kept trying to figure out why the hell Asgardians had magic when they're supposed to be like this alien race. I mean, if you think too hard about it, you're just going to ruin the magic. <sighs> kind of like with uh, Harry Potter. You know, in the sense that, uh, okay, it's in the modern day and witches have their own world, but why the fuck can't they, you, why the fuck is everything, like, you know, 19, 1800 technology? Why the hell do they have to use, uh, parchments at, in school when they can't just, you know, buy a goddamn notebook? And I don't mean notebook as in, uh, 
a MacBook or a uh, electronic notebook. I'm talking about just a normal notebook. You know how fucking expensive parchment is? I mean, the process to get that is in super con- it's a- it's piece- it's animal skin, for God's sake, okay? And to use that as paper is beyond stupid and wasteful. Okay, anyway, back to the artwork. <laughs> oh my god. We're nearly done here and I've just been ranting about Harry Potter on a domino piece. That's ridiculous. Okay, in the end, uh, you see that the line is very, very faded. The black lines. But I'm gonna bring them back because I was... It, I don't think this domino worked well without the black line. But in the end, I, w I went back for it because it looked better that way. It was just, you know, to see if I could, you know, work without it. But, you know... I'll make another piece without the black line. Hopefully that'll uh, give me the result I wanted. But you know what? You gotta look, you gotta go through all this shit before you can actually find the stuff that looks good. That looks great. Okay, and add in some texture, doing some uh, burn tool here and there, as well as the uh, screen tool. And for the background, I actually went with something super simple, a domino. And that's how we went from uh, the pencil sketch all the way to the colored sketch. The colored sketch. Yeah, finally. Okay, I need to work better on my timing. Okay, well, thank you all for uh, listening to me ranting on and on about this. Uh, if you're ever in uh, Holland, I do recommend going to any of our uh, many cons in the near future. And for the love of God, please like and subscribe. Thank you all for watching. Bye!